300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts. And he said their blood was on her hands. That's nuts. This could be the video that completely changes your life. No matter if you are a believer in Jesus and you are confident you know where you're going after you die or whether you are maybe just a person who is curious about the afterlife and what people have to say and what their experiences are, this video is gonna make you really think seriously about your life. So I encourage you, get comfortable because you are definitely going to wanna watch this whole thing. Let's get right into it. October the 2nd, the most traumatizing and awakening day of my life. I remember it was on a Thursday. Matter of fact, let's take it back. Wednesday night, I found myself looking at these different YouTube clips and watching different out-of-body experiences and different films that, you know, they used to scare me. You know? And I would watch it and it would blow me away. It would catch my attention. And it used to scare me. So I want to go back and show this to you guys because if you've never seen Mary Baxter, as you can see right there on the screen, Mary Baxter has a book. She has these videos about experiences that the Lord has given her to see visions of heaven, to see visions of hell, like it says there on the screen. So this is what he's talking about where he's listening to all of these preachers and these teachers talk about what the Lord has shown them. And then you're going to hear that he gets one of his own. Attention. And it used to scare me so bad that I would, I would wonder, I, I would, my mind used to go in place like, God, is this stuff real? You know, I couldn't understand it because I, I've never been to that place. So um, I found myself um, praying. I remember walking outside of, of my apartment and I was walking back and forth with my eyes closed and just started praying and I asked God, I said, Lord, if you give me an out-of-body experience, you know, I, I vow to share your word and to tell the people what I saw, you know, um, not expecting that God was going to respond back to that because I was just praying out. I was just praying. So I want to comment on this because a lot of people don't have these experiences or these types of experience. Maybe you are a person who wants to have encounters with Jesus, but you don't think to ask. And so I love that he thought to ask because Jesus said that we don't have because we don't ask. I have to pause it throughout just for copyright reasons and things, but let's keep going. You know, uh, not actually looking for a response. And after that night, the next morning, that Thursday, October the 2nd, I had a dream. And my spirit, um, not expecting that God was going to respond back to that because I was to share your word and to tell the people what I saw, you know, um, not expecting that God was going to respond back to that because I was just My husband used to have visions of angels. He would see angels and tell me about them. And one day I told God, I was like, I want that. I don't get, how come I don't see angels? How come I don't see this? And the Lord just encouraged me, well, just ask. And so I started praying and asking. And sure enough, the Lord began giving me visions as well just praying you know uh, not actually looking for a response and after that night the next morning that Thursday October the 2nd I had a dream and my spirit left my body it was like I was in my apartment and my spirit got pulled out of my body and I would go in these different transits um bright color lights it was white should I so some people have an issue with that word trance. They feel like it's new age or witchcraft, but actually the word trance is in the Bible. Peter talks about falling into a trance and the Lord showing him things. So trances can actually come from the Lord. The problem is when you are trying in your own flesh or through a demonic spirit to drum up a trance, that is when you start getting into the new age. A trance that comes from the Lord will always be from the spirit to you, not you trying to tap into the spirit realm illegally I, I, the best way i can explain it would be shoo, 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 all the different flashing lights and i, I appeared before a blue sky with no clouds uh, it was like a blue place no land no trees no grass no water nothing there was nothing there but a blue atmosphere and i would see this atmosphere goes millions of miles upon millions of miles where nothing existed it was like nothing was hidden Everything was revealed. Everything was 
before your eyes you can see it's interesting that he uses that term everything was revealed in luke 12 2 through 3 it says the time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all and we was in this clear kind of body form some form of light as a you would refer to a soul or a spirit or, or and, and I could see through it was so transparent and in front of me was thousands among thousands similar to what I was and thousands among thousands behind me and, and I knew that it was some form of a soul and in the middle of my chest were seeds you know, multiple seeds I didn't know what they were for, and I realized that I was the only being that could actually move out of my place. And, and we was in this clear kind of body form, some form of light, as a, you would refer to a soul or a spirit. Or, or and, and I could see through, it was so transparent, and in front of me was thousands among thousands similar to what I was, and thousands among thousands behind me. And, and I knew that it was some form of a soul. And in the middle of my chest were seeds, you know, multiple seeds. I didn't know what they were for. And I realized that I was the only being that could actually move out of my place and look and observe, smell, taste, you know, feel. All my senses were active at this point. Take note of the seeds in his chest because this is important. This is going to come up later. And this just really blew my mind. And so, you know, um, I began to look around and, and, and to observe the things that I saw, not knowing that this was a dream. I thought this was reality. I thought this was actually happening, you know. Um, and I looked forward, and there was this great shadow way in front of me, way at the end of the line. It was like thousands and thousands of people in front of me, and there was a shadow, a great big shadow, but it had no detail. It was like a, as a vapor. And I could I could see that it was a shadow of something that was in the front, and um, I you know I had many questions at this point in this dream, and out of nowhere, I think we all would. I, I hear I heard these words, depart from me, and this galaxy, this portal I don't know what to call it, on the on on the right side of of God. you know, uh, or Jesus Christ, you know, whoever you you, you decide to identify that spot of judgment. On the right side of him, there was this big portal that opened up, and there will be stones of fire. It, normally, when you, 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 you get a lighter and you cut it on, try to um, spark a flame, but instead of fire, it was stones, and they will leak out of this portal. And whoever, whoever that guy said, depart from me, flew down this place. Now, notice that he says, depart from me. Because we get this in the Bible when Jesus is telling us about there's going to be people that come to the judgment seat and Jesus is going to say to them, depart from me, I never knew you. It's one of the scariest verses in all the Bible because it says that there are going to be people who think that they have lived a life for the Lord and he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And it, the flame, the, the stones were so hot that it will burn everybody outside of that portal. On the left side of our, our body or our form, it will burn us. And it, everybody be like, ooh, like as if it was so cold. A lot of people, I think, are thinking that after we die, we don't have bodies, we're just floating spirits. But what he's talking about is being able to feel things still. Now, we know that in heaven, we get glorified bodies. So we will actually have a body that will have some sort of sensation. Now, we know that there's no death in heaven. There's no tears. There's no sickness. What he's talking about is prior to, obviously, going to heaven or going to hell. It's it's the judgment before either of those two options. But it's interesting to me that he says that even though they are called souls or spirits and they're translucent, they still can actually feel things. So how you would tell somebody to close that door. It's too cold. That's how hot it was. And the, the portal closed. And then the, he, he sent them so fast that the screams were late. I would hear, ah! Like, it was like the part for me <laughs> and it closed up then the screams come ah! and it terrified me and then out of nowhere something snatched us up and like we moved up the line and I began to think I, I didn't understand 
It was so fast, the screams were late. That's terrifying. Where we was, I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is judgment. Yeah, my, you know, I had many questions and I would hear, depart me, depart me, depart me, and all these different people will be sent to hell. And the part that scared me the most was the people that were getting judged, you could hear when God was talking to them. And you could hear everything they got judged from. Ah, you could hear everything, not just your own judgment. He's saying you could hear what was happening with people in front. So again, like we just were saying in Luke where it says everything will be revealed. Everything's coming out. Everything that was a secret. That's crazy to me that even other people that were waiting for their own judgment could hear what was happening. Ah. So if somebody went to hell for something that you knew you struggled with in your life, you knew where you were going. And so that part, I'm just saying people go shoo, sit there, boo, boo, but I, I'm seeing the flame and it's just constantly burning everybody outside that haven't been judged yet. And I could hear some of the people um, talking to God. And um, I remember there was a woman, you know, blonde hair, and God was talking to her. He said, I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook, but I'm judging you on how everybody else received it. That's nuts. 300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts. And he said their blood was on her hands. Their blood is on her hands or is on your hands. I cannot imagine that would be the scariest thing to me. And that may seem really harsh and unfair. But listen to this in Ezekiel 318. God said, when I say to the wicked, you will surely die or you will certainly die and you do not warn him or speak out to tell him to turn from his wicked way to save his life. That same evil man will die in his sin. So the one that God spoke to originally, but you will be responsible for his blood. So that's why as a Christian, I take it, I take it very seriously, my responsibility to tell people about Jesus because if God says to the wicked, you will certainly die. If I don't do anything to try to tell that person that they can be saved, that they, they can repent and, and receive the salvation of the Lord, then actually their blood is on my hands. So this is super intense. And I don't know what he said to bother me and I'm talking about, I couldn't express how powerful his words were. It's as if he said, the part of me and everything shook. Let, let me go like back. This, is, this is just nuts. He said, I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook, but I'm judging you on how everybody else received it. 300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts. And he said their blood was on her hands. And I don't know what he said, the part of me and I'm talking about. I couldn't express how powerful his words were. It's as if he said, depart from me and everything shook. And she was like, she was sent with great force. And the portal opened up. She was going to flash. And it was close. And like, ah! And the screams were so late. It terrified me. People, uh, adultery, uh, 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 fornication, uh, so many different things that I could actually hear. And people in front of me were terrified. Because a, a lot of those people were struggling or went through the same situation and they never repented. So I, that was the one. So that's the key right there is when you are living in sin, but you haven't repented. And the Bible says it, it lists all those things in scriptures. The people who will be going to hell is adulterers, fornicators, liars. That would be terrifying. One thousand sent here, sent here. They would go, they were flying, my door was flying so fast. I've never seen something so fast. And it got to the point where I was next in line. And he called me up. And he started talking to me. And keep in mind that our life held held us hand to hand. So anything we did in our life, our our life testified against us. So you couldn't lie because your life testified. Say, yes, you did. You did this. You did this at this time. Yes, you did. And whenever God would speak to me, you would see a big screen. Like you would see 
as if whatever God says, it comes to life. If you study the Bible for legal language, you will begin to understand so much more of how the Lord has set up the earth and the principles and why certain things are even down to the judgment seat, right? Coming to a judgment seat that you'll begin to understand the supernatural realm so much more. And so um, he started talking to me and he started telling me everything that I could have did better. And and at this point, you know, I'm like, okay, God, you know, I could do this better. I did it. You know, I did okay with it, but I could have did it better. So he began to say other things, and he brought up this specific woman. And he asked me, why didn't I forgive her? And he gave me her specific name. I'm not going to say it. He gave me her specific name. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. He asked me, why didn't I forgive her? I said, I did, God. I did forgive her. He said, well, uh... If you forgave her, when you get on the phone and talk to her, why is it that you treat her like the situation happened all over again? And I'm like, God, but I, I did forgive her. He said, well, if you forgave her, why are those seeds still in your chest? And I looked down. I was like, oh, my God. That's what those are for. Those are seeds of what I did in my life. The seeds. Okay, so he's talking about the seeds. Now, this is like... When the Bible talks about the word being planted in us or the devil coming and snatching up the word, snatching up the seeds, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like when seeds are planted, right? In good soil or bad soil. And and so it's like our hearts are a garden where seeds can be planted. Things can be uprooted like the Bible talks about. We need to think of ourselves like a garden where good things can be planted, bad things can be planted, and they can grow. So in this case, obviously, these seeds were not good. They weren't supposed to be there once he forgave her. And this just blows my mind about forgiveness, okay, when he talks about this. This sent me on a whole trail of thinking and praying and talking to the Lord and searching out in Scripture about forgiveness. Because what he just said is that God said to him, when you talk to her, why do you treat her like that situation happened if you forgave her? And a lot of times I think we talk about forgiveness in the sense of, well, you need to keep boundaries and, and we need to, you know, once that situation happens, we can forgive them, but don't forget because they're going to take advantage of you. And and that's a little bit scary to talk about just acting as if the situation never happened. And what I found is that in Hebrews 8, 12, it says that God remembers our sins no more. Like he actually forgets them. He puts them out of his mind. So he treats us as if we never sinned when we've repented. And so that is, that's a tough thing when we talk about forgiveness with other people. But if they have truly repented, meaning they've turned from their ways, right? Not just that they said that they're sorry, but they've turned from their ways. When we forgive people, we treat them like that situation never happened. We treat them that way emotionally in our actions toward them and our behaviors towards them. So this, this is a big deal because I think a lot of us, and I have to examine myself, are there people that I thought that I had forgiven, but I haven't actually forgiven? That's a little scary to think about. Those are for, those are seeds of what I did in my life. The things I didn't forgive. So he was talking to me and I was like, oh my God. And he told me, he looked at me and said, because you didn't forgive her, I didn't forgive you some of your sins. And I was like, oh my God. And he started telling me so many other things and he ain't told me not one good thing yet. And at this point, I'm getting terrified because my mind is starting now going to a place where I'm imagining how hot this, this fire is going to be when this portal open. And so, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I, I didn't know how to explain how terrified I was. I, I got to admit that in my own head, when I think about the judgment, see, right, I'm thinking about God is so merciful. God is so loving. He's going to tell me all these, you know, wonderful things. All my sins are forgiven. I'll, I will have repented. And I'm like thinking, wow, I, I need to repent right now. The pride of thinking that, <laughs> that he's not going to bring up all of my all of my junk, right? Like, I mean, I know he is, but I really wasn't taking it as seriously until I saw this video and, and I really placed myself in that situation. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I really need to understand how, how sinful a human I am and how much I really have needed Jesus and his sacrifice. Words can describe. When you meet God, faith, words can describe how terrifying it is to look your creator face to face. 
where, where there, there's nothing hid from him. There's nothing. Your inner thoughts are revealed before him. Your, your how your, your perception, how you feel, everything that host you hosted in this body is presented before him. And so you know he. I got to a point where I, I just, I like, I didn't want to hear God no more. I was really turning my head because I was afraid that, you know, it's already made his mind up. <laughs> I was so afraid. And so I turned my head and he would just kind of tell me everything that I didn't do right or, or I could should, I should have did better. And at this point, I knew I was going to hell. I knew it. I, I, I was fully persuaded that this was it. I don't know about you guys, but I do not want to get into this situation and feel like I'm just hearing all the things that I could have done better. That is why I'm so passionate now about doing as much for the Lord, not in my own strength, but allowing him to do whatever he wants to do through me to the fullest where I'm not holding back or I'm not holding him back. And I can just allow him to use me in whatever way because I don't want to get there someday and have him say, oh, I wanted to do this through you and I had these people to save through you and you were supposed to help these people. And to hear him say, you were lazy, you overslept, you didn't, you weren't bold enough. Oh my gosh, that would be terrible. That would be terrible. So I turned my head and I was like, I don't want to hear it no more, but you know, my mind, I'm just, I'm just, I don't, I don't hear, I'm just really trying to imagine how hot hell is going to be. I'm like, oh my God, Lord, I have no more chance. If I go down there, I can't come back. Like, Lord, please don't send me to hell, please. Like, God, please. I'm begging you. And I'm, I, I'm more terrified, ter I was more terrified than I can express. And so I turned my head and, and at this point, I no longer wanted to hear what he had to say because I knew at this point, you know, I, I was going to hell. And I would have my head turned, and out of nowhere, there was this warm feeling that would come over the, the interface of my soul. And I would turn my head, and it would go in slow motion, and the tears would fly from my face. And I looked at God, and I was looking at his, his judgment. What, what, what was going to be my judgment? And he looked at me, he said, face to face, you don't get it well done. You get it, you barely made it. You don't get a well done. You get a barely made it. I do not want that said to me. And he stepped back and said, come. And at this point, I was so confused. I'm like, oh my God. And on the left side of God, heaven would open up so soft with brilliant lights. Uh, the colors were indescribable. Like colors I've never seen before in my life. It was so pretty, so, so, so pretty, so amazing. And the colors would blossom as they grow, and as they grew, and the heaven would open up so gentle. And I would walk toward that direction, and my hand would go in the portal. And when my hand went through, it got bigger. My arm went through, it got bigger. It was like I was growing into a, a, a mature state of a glorified body. That's what I mentioned earlier. So we know that when we go to heaven, we will have a glorified body. We will have a physical form. My leg went through and like, got bigger. And you can see how big I got on the other side. And, and how my soul was being transformed into a glorified body. And my body would go through it. And, and only piece that was left behind was my leg. And right before my last foot got in, um, I woke up. The dream scared me so bad. I was underneath our living room table for hours. I was so terrified. I was terrified to move. I was terrified to do anything because I was afraid it was going to be added to my judgment. I thought that was the judgment. I, that didn't feel like a dream. I could feel, I could taste, I could tell you how it made me feel. Everything was so alive in the dream. And at that moment, I was asking God, like, God, why did you give me this dream? He said, because I want you to warn my people that the things which you saw are the things that shall be. And I didn't realize that what I prayed for and the vow I made before God that he was going to fulfill it. Now he's looking for my end to be fulfilled. Wow. So he said, now God's looking for my end to be fulfilled. So that's why he was doing this interview. He was, he's sharing his testimony. Now it's gotten millions of views. So he has upheld his end of the bargain with God. But Wow. 
I can't, I, I've had some dreams from the Lord that were very intense, some visions that were very intense, nothing like this, nothing like a heavenly encounter. And so I'm grateful for people who have and are willing to share, you know, and there's tons of them out there. So use discernment in, in what's truly of the Lord and what's truly not. But, but even if it just gets you to examine yourself, examine your life and think about, do I really want to take a chance on my eternity? Maybe you don't know the Lord at all, or I don't want something added to my judgment, right? Like he's talking about here. So that's why I'm here talking to you right now. Forgive. Let go. I couldn't describe how many people that allow for, for unforgiveness to grow in them and it, and it caused a bitterness, which caused them to do things that they got judged for. That thing caused them not to make it to heaven. I was terrified. It was so many people went to hell. And it, it felt like, I was, it felt like I was the first one. Like God, why, it was thousands among thousands of people in front of me. That is scary to me. So today I encourage you to get it right with God. Get it right with your fellow friends, your enemies, that church hurt. That causes you to attack people in silence. Go get it right. Because hell is not worth it. Imagine, and this was just the judgment portion, right? He didn't even see what happened afterwards, but he could feel the heat he was talking about. And so this is, ah, this is why I take this stuff so, so seriously. God, God scared me so bad in this dream, but I knew it was for a reason. So today choose love. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and my sins. And that he, he, he died but he rose on the third day. Believe that he's the son of God. Read the scripture and apply it to your life. So that when Jesus come back, he don't see your flesh, but he see his word. I encourage you today. Forgive, love, and watch how God changed your life. I thank you for watching. Be blessed. Our actions matter, and it matters if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, because all of us fall short of the glory of God, yes, but if you don't have Jesus as a covering for your sins, I don't want you walking away from this video and thinking, oh, I'll, just, I'll just talk to the Lord another time. Maybe I'm not quite ready to give my life. I don't know if that's really real. I want you to do it today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation because we are not promised another day. We're not promised another hour. God is giving these dreams to people. He is giving these visions to people for a reason. And it's because he loves people and he wants them all to be in relationship with him. He doesn't want anyone to perish. But the truth is that he's a God of justice. He's a perfect God and he gave us free will and he doesn't force himself on anyone. But his desire is that you would choose him and spend eternity in heaven with him. And so I wanna pray with you, just say, Father God, I'm so sorry for living a life of sin apart from you. Today, I turn from that sin and I give my life to Jesus. I make him my Lord, my Savior, my Master. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, that he rose again on the third day. Holy Spirit, come and live inside of me and teach me right from wrong. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
If you prayed that prayer, I want you to type in the comments right now. I prayed that prayer so I can be praying for you. I am praying that the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth, that the fire of God will come upon you so strongly that you will you will be obedient to the Lord so that you won't be living in sinfulness, so you won't miss out on the fullness of what God has for you in this life, but that you will get to heaven and you will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Listen, this is why I do these videos because I care about people. I do not want to be in the judgment line hearing thousands and thousands of people being sent to hell. I want to hear over and over, well done, well done, welcome, welcome. I want to hear the voices of people that I have prayed for, that I have that I have sent these videos out to calling and asking you guys to give your life to Jesus so that we can all be in heaven together. I take it very seriously. I want to see revival happen in the earth, in America. And listen, if you are feeling that, if you feel strongly that you want to be a person that helps other people get to heaven, that makes sure that there are not thousands and thousands and thousands of people going to hell because they were never told. Because like that, like he was talking, talking about the blood can be on our hands if we are not sharing the gospel. So if you are a person who wants to join with me and partner with me in sharing the gospel, in spreading the fire all over the earth, listen, the Lord has given me a vision for the end of 2024 to see a hundred thousand souls give their lives to Jesus. And already we're about a year and a half into this and we have seen about 95,000 people say that they have given their lives to the Lord. And so I I ask you to join me if you are feeling the stirring of the Holy Spirit to say, yes, I want to partner with somebody who is on fire. I want to join with you in this mission to save souls. Then please join me on Patreon. I just started this community and it's going to be for people who are, who are in this together, who want to see revival happen. I'll be posting exclusive content, exclusive videos to train up everybody who's in my Patreon so that you can share the gospel, so you can learn more about Jesus, so I can be praying over specific things happening in your life. And I'll be posting exclusive content about my family and and things going on, how we raise our children, things that I'm not just going to put out there to anybody. So if you join me there, we're going to be in this together. You'll be partnering with ministries that we partner with that feed hungry children all over the world that are sowing into crusades so that people can be hearing the gospel preached live and in person, not just online. And I would be so honored if you would join me there. If this stirred you, if you want to see more videos like this, see more people be saved, then please subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss when more videos come out. And please share this with somebody. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.